Shalom, beloved family. It's your girl, Sophia Spiritualite, and we're here for our daily prayer and reading. Of course, we meet every day at the Moor and Sassor. We say a prayer, we read a psalm, and then we do a three-card reading just to see what messages we can get from the Most High and the angels, or through the angels. So without further ado, all praise, all glory, and all honor go to the Most High, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I Am loving kindness, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Enoch, Moses, Noah, and Solomon. We thank you for another day to labor in the vineyard. We ask for permission to speak with the angels for just a few moments so that we can get some messages that will allow us to be of better service to you and to the kingdom. To the Holy Mother, we thank you for always being with us. We thank you for guiding us, and we thank you for walking with us down the path of life. O oh, Divine Mother, illumine me with divine wisdom, vivify me with divine life, and purify me with divine love, that in all I think and say and do, I may be more and more thy child. We acknowledge our older, wiser brother, Yahawashai, and the perfect example he set over how to both climb the tree of life and conquer the tree of death. And to the angels, to our personal guardian angels, to the archangels, to the council of nine, to the council of twelve, to the council of twenty-four, to the twenty-four elders, to the forty-two letter name of the Most High, to the seventy-two letter name of the Most High, to the council of 144,000, to the 216 angels atop the tree of life, to the entire administration of angels, and to all the angels whose names we know and the ones whose names we do not know. We ask that you come and be with us for just a moment. Give us a message that will allow us to be of better service to the Most High and to the kingdom. All right, let's read Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall I offer bullocks upon thine altar. Selah. All right, so we have our daytime deck here. And, of course, this deck is um, the Tarot of Light deck. You can get it on the website. You go to fruitsandspirit.com. Um, it is a beginner deck. It's easy to use, easy to understand, and um, it correlates with the rider weight. That's the, that's the line I was waiting for. So we have our cards here. All praise, all glory, and all honor go to the Most High, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am loving kindness, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Enoch, Moses, Noah, and Solomon. We thank you for allowing us to speak with the angels for just a few minutes so that we can get some messages that will help us be of better service to you and to the kingdom. To the Holy Mother, we thank you for always being with us. We acknowledge our older, wiser brother, Yahawashai, and of course to the angels whom we've already called in. We ask that you give us a message that's clear, that's easy for us to understand, that's easy for us to apply, and that allows us to have a greater understanding of um, what it is that we need to be doing 
to make the most of the energy that's coming in. Oh, goodness. How many cards are that? Oh. All right. We've got two. All right. We've got two. Um, of course, when you give us a message, we will let the Most High know that you have delivered these things for us and to us. Um, we are immensely grateful for everything that you do. All right. So let's go in order. This will be our first card. We got this card not too long ago. Page of Stars, which is curiosity. I just looks like a portal opening up. All right. And our next card is... All right, now we've got this four of hearts in our present position. Yesterday it was in our past position. All right, and those were the cards that fell out. And then we've got the ace of angels, which is wisdom. Unfortunately, not too grounded in reality today, but can be grounded in reality every day. All right. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got. I turned it too much. All right, let's start with the page of stars. Remember that card fell out, jumped out, really. All right, curiosity. Consider anything new as a way to discover more of yourself through curiosity. Intuition expands us, expands as you adapt adjust and adapt your energy to new ways the page of stars reveals that you are entering a period of fresh optimism and curiosity in relation to creative interests such as writing drawing or dancing it may also relate to invention or business venture a past attempt may might have been clumsy but it was a start and now you can be sure of your footing there's no such thing as failure but there are clarifying moments of learning and improvement Progress is a process. Play with the ideas and let your desire to know what's in, over, and beyond be stronger than your fear. Oh, my goodness. Golly. Be stronger than your fear of failure or the unknown. Don't let others turn you away from your loves. And this correlates with the Page of Wands, a faithful and loyal person, emissary, good intentions, and consistency. Um... Oh, my. Okay, so, y'all, my brain just, okay. So, let's see. So, I have been talking about um, developing your uh, capacities, right? Meaning, how to choose which thoughts you have and which thoughts you do not have. And um, one of the parts of that is that... Once you don't want to, you don't want to automatically exclude trying something because you failed at it the first time. Business is a really good example for this. Like um, I've talked about in a lot of videos, I have been in business. I've had a business since I was probably 11. But in my adult life, I've literally had a business since I was 18. I've gone through a lot of different businesses. And most of them were, eh, they were okay. Some of them were, none of them were quite what I, I didn't get from any of them what I was hoping to get, what I was expecting to get, what I was desiring to get. And um, even my last big business thing, I've talked about that before on the um, the biggest, the, the number one secret everyone knows except for you about how p the date of your business, you know, can can make or break your business before you even start it. And so, um, you know, that most people 
at a certain point would just say, you know, I'm going to give up on this. But that's not how the most high works. You have to keep, especially when something is like, see, this is why, you know, taking away from us what we did in our past lives has been so insidious because if you've always been an entrepreneur in every single past life, which I'm starting to assume that I have, then it's really insidious to take that away from somebody and make them think, oh, no, you should not be an entrepreneur. You should be um, something else. You should do this. You should do that. Um, or if you've always been a priestess or a priest, a high priest in every past incarnation, taking that away from you can do the same thing. You know, just whatever it is that you've always done because you travel in the same bloodline and you also travel in the same line of work. And therefore, if, you know, it is taken away from you, um, you know, what that you even have a past life, that you even know what a past life is, sometimes you can start to do stuff and it not work out. But that's because you are unable to immediately draw on the information that you had in past lives. So... You know, a lot of people, because like, like I say, I've been in business for a very long time. Like, I just, that's that's just what we've always done. And um, if I look at the stuff that I've done, my businesses before, and I held myself to that standard, then, you know, that would be a great deal of lessons learned, failures, whatever the case may be. However, in the grand scheme of the the length of my soul being existing, it's not it's not it's not even a blink of time. I mean, I'm not that old. I'm under 40. So, you know, 18 or so years of failure is like a blink of an eye to the existence, the entire existence period of your soul. So, for people who are like maybe just waking up and they're older and they're like, man, I've wasted a lot of time, so on and so forth. I mean, you have to think about how many times your soul has incarnated. Haven't really wasted any time. It's just the people who are able to tap into their past incarnations earlier are able to implement these things earlier. And that comes, you know, with teaching from our families and stuff like that. But if it takes you longer... I mean, it's still just a, this whole life cycle is just a blink of an eye, you know? Um, and that's why they say in the blink of an eye, it's over. But that's really true. This is this these incarnation cycles we have now are not even 100 years for most people. They're like 60, 70 years sometimes, you know, 80 years if you're lucky, 90, uh, six years if you're my great grandmother, you know, like they're not long incarnation cycles. So. You know, even if you fail at something your whole life, you know, this is still just a blink of an eye. It's not who you are. And so you have to stay curious and you have to stay hungry to, you know, figure out what, figure out who you are. Again, a lot of that is in your chart. I mean, I keep saying that it's very important, but, you know, if you're trying to figure out what you did in your past life and you don't know your chart backwards and forwards, you ain't really trying to figure it out. You know, if you haven't had multiple readings from multiple different astrologers with multiple different skill sets, you really not you you really will not know what your past life is. If you don't understand your north node, um, you know, in its placement and position, then you can't understand what your past life is. And so again, this is another reason why, you know, I made that video the other day about my prices going up because I understand this at a deeper level now and you know, it's really important for people to know that they got to do the work of understanding who they are. Remember who you are, but you can't remember who you are if you don't work with what you have. You know what day you were born. You know what time you were born. Work with that. Work with what you have. We don't have all our books, but unfortunately for them, they can't change the movement of the planets. The planets move the way they have always moved, the way they always will move forever and always. It's in a book. Raphael's ephemeris, you know, that's the book that Raphael carried with him. It's the movement of the planets. Almost everything can be diagnosed by the movement of the planets. So you have to, you have to really, um,
you have to really ignore your past failures as real learning experiences and um, try to focus on what you're trying to accomplish now because also before you didn't have the knowledge of the guardian angels you didn't really know how the most high work you didn't know how any of this stuff worked so a lot of the stuff that you did in the past is under past pretenses and now you have new pretenses so you want to operate under those okay all right our next card is the four of hearts i'm not going to go on about that i feel like y'all got the point the four of hearts which is depression now remember that we had this in our future position yesterday so now it's showing uh yeah we had this in our future position yesterday and now showing up in our present position so depression looking outward for happiness will cause compromise and bring disappointment look within happiness is a way of being four of hearts whispers through a mist of emotion there's trouble seen beyond the negative aspects of life here we go this ties right in certain experiences from the recent past are weighing heavily on the present you are blaming yourself or another Another or an outside situation for your current situation. Nothing has gone wrong. There's a bigger loving picture beyond your view. Focus on one thing that is going well in your life. Open your heart and vision to other strengths in your life and add them to your gratitude list. In little ways, every moment is gently moving you away from pain and toward happiness. You are stronger than you know. Change is closer than you think. And this correlates with the Four of Cups, which is weariness, stationary period, aversion, and structure. You know... Like I said, Uranus is getting ready to go into retrograde in a couple days. Tomorrow, actually. Yes, tomorrow. Uranus is getting ready to go into, etro into retrograde, which basically means that it is kind of like the pause. It's like the great pause. The whole planet, you know, waits with bated breath on what happens, you know, when Uranus actually goes into retrograde. Right now, we're just feeling the energies of it, and you can see that everything is clearly falling apart. So, the whole thing about that is you have to be able to manage your emotions. That's what these videos are for, to manage your emotions. So, you may feel some slight depression today, you know, whatever the case may be. You want to be clear of that. You want to be aware of it so that you can avoid it. You can find one good thing that's going on, one good thing that's happening to you, and focus on that. And unlike yesterday, we can see that the next thing coming through is wisdom. Because yesterday, that's what we ended on, and it's a little bit... I don't like, you know, ending on those kind of cards because... You know, it's it's not really something optimistic to look forward to. But I did talk extensively about how to deal with this yesterday. So if you missed it, I would just go back to my, my video from yesterday. I'm not going to go into the um, how to manage your emotions and all of that. Because this video will be another 20 minutes. And I did talk about that extensively yesterday. All right, so our last card is the Ace of Angels, which is Wisdom. Love and wisdom rain down on you, bringing new ways to consider, perceive, and create your life. The Ace of Angels opens your minds to new ideas and innovations. There are many truths, as each is as valid as the next. You are coming into a deeper truth and seeking a situation with fresh clarity. This card may indicate a new study or, material, or mental challenge that will push you to draw solutions from a broader perspective. You are already... You are ready to cut through a belief that no longer works for you. Combine intellect with your wisdom and all will be a breeze. You are in the slipstream of an angel's thoughts, ready to hear ideas that resonate with your truth. Get ready for all that is coming by. Realizing it is never good or bad, just is. And this correlates with the Ace of Swords, which is clear thought, purpose, triumph, and spiritual truth. Again, you know... Some people feel like they don't have any inspiration to do whatever it is they're trying to do. And a lot of times it's, that you, it's not that you don't have the inspiration. It's that you won't implement the inspiration that you've been given. So I take myself as a perfect example. I started writing courses, classes, lessons, and, and stuff like that on entrepreneurship probably 10 years ago. 
and um, I recorded a few, but I didn't press it. You know what I mean? And it's not that saying that I should have pressed it at the time, but I'm now seeing that if I had started down this road 10 years ago, I'd be 10 years ahead. However, it might not have been the quite the right time because I didn't have this knowledge and understanding. And I feel like this makes my um, ability to teach richer and more in depth because it's actually literally like tapping into the angelic realm. And I'm able to bring information in from that, which is more helpful to people so I can understand it. But if I had just started on that idea that I had, you know, it really pursued it, and, and even if nobody heard it, I would have 10 years of the, worth of information, you know, I would have it, I would have it down, and so this is why I was saying at the beginning of the um, fast, so just whatever you're going to do, start it. Now I'm saying it again, because whatever you do in September is going to bear fruit in June, so if you take your September, and you're still like, I don't know what I should do, this and that, you haven't been thinking about it, for this whole month of August, you know, when you receive this information, you know, like when I started talking about it at the start of the fast, then you basically took a whole month that you should have been thinking about what you were going to do, at least, you know, bring it into your consciousness. So then September, you could implement it. I mean, that's what I've done. You see, I have the courses coming up, which is a reminder. I rescheduled the course from this Sunday to the following Saturday because the energy, um, the space weather is really bad on Sunday, and I'm not going to do that to y'all. The best, the better day for space weather is going to be next Saturday. So it's going to be next Saturday, and there will be um, replay available um, at the same price for people who aren't able to attend. So um, you'll see all that information coming up. But the point of the matter is that's what I've been doing. I'm not just on here reading this stuff and telling y'all stuff, and I'm not doing it in the background. It's obvious that I'm doing it in the background, you know what I mean? And so what I need, you know, what I suggest that everybody do is you still have a week or so, week and a half before um, the start of September. You need to make sure you have a really solid plan in place. And the better the plan you have, the better uh, uh, fruit that you'll bear. Because remember, I said this yesterday, everybody's going to sow seeds in September. You know, you can sow a, a field full of seeds of confusion. Or you can f sow a field full of seeds of um, of directed seeds, of passion, of, of, of financial security, of whatever. But if you just leave it to chance, you're going to you're going to sow a seed, a field of seeds full of, you know, confusion or whatever the universe is going to give you instead of trying to influence and affect what is given to you, you know. It's not that our influence and our effect is right, but our efforts are rewarded just by sowing thoughtfully. Um, remember the parable of the sower and the reaper. I mean, that's 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 how it is. So you can sow on rocks, you can sow on bad ground, you can sow wherever you want, but you know what you sow, you will reap, and everybody is always sowing something. So you want to make sure you're sowing what you're sowing makes sense. So that you're able to reap the benefits, right? So, um, yeah, so, and that's, there's lots of wisdom in that. And this is a more optimistic card. So I'm hoping that when this energy comes in that, um, you know, more of the Holy Spirit will descend upon us and we'll have a greater understanding of what kind of stuff is going on. So, all right, well, here is, um, I'll let y'all take a look at the cards while I write them down. All right, let's do our blessing of the separate. All right. 
Blessed be the light beyond all being, forever blessed be the mighty one. Keter, blessed be the breathing of origination, forever blessed be the mighty one. Chokma, blessed be eternal wisdom, forever blessed be the mighty one. Bina, blessed be omniscient understanding, forever blessed be the mighty one. Chesed, blessed be perpetual compassion, forever blessed be the mighty one. Gevora, blessed be almighty justice, forever blessed be the mighty one. Tiferet, blessed be transcendent beauty, forever blessed be the mighty one. Netzach, blessed be unceasing victory, forever blessed be the mighty one. Hod, blessed be surpassing glory, forever blessed be the mighty one. Yesod, blessed be infallible foundation, forever blessed be the mighty one. Malchut, blessed be all life throughout the kingdom, forever blessed be the mighty one. All praise, all glory, and all honor go to the Most High, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am loving kindness, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We thank you for allowing us to speak with the angels for just a few moments, and we would like to report back that they have fulfilled the covenant with us. So we would like that to be noted to their records. To the earthly mother, we thank you for always being with us. We acknowledge our older, wiser brother, Yahweh Shai. And, of course, to the angels, you guys are doing a great job. We have let the Most High know that you fulfilled the covenant, and we are tremendously grateful for all of your hard work. Thank you for everything that you do for us and, and in service to the kingdom. Let God be praised in the beginning and the end. Who supplicates him, he will neither despise nor refuse. God above us, God before us, God possessing all things. May the Father of heaven grant us a portion of mercy. Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Loalam Vayed. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom throughout eternity. Ha Rashaman Hu Yashazir Lanu Evodat Biet Ha Mikdash Limkoman Bimhira Biyamanu Omen 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 and Selah. May the merciful one restore unto us the service of his holy temple to his place speedily and in our days. Amen, 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 and Selah. To the spirits who are here with us, you're invited to go in peace. To my beloved viewers, you're invited to be at peace and always remember the Most High is your peace. Shalom, everyone. We'll see you for the reading tonight at Sessor.